Hey everybody, it's Tim with the University of Vinyl. Thank you for tuning in to my channel again today. Always appreciated. I know that there are many, many options out there on YouTube that you are taking the time to use up your precious time. Thank you for watching my channel. Hopefully you're getting something of value, something useful, maybe even, dare I say, entertaining. Enough for the pitter-patter opening monologue. <laughs> I, um, I've been digging for the last couple of weeks here and there when I get time and always on the lookout for, at this point in my kind of collecting sphere, I'm plugging holes and I'm maybe looking for upgrades. I'm not going out to record shops and walking out with eight records, you know, like I may have done two or three years ago. Um, but I consider it a huge success if I can find something like this. <laughs> this is a very, very kind of beat up cover of Bayou Country Credence Clearwater Revival, you know, an amazing album in its own right. But what you want to look for, if you want to hear this, let's let's make believe it's, what, 1969 again. And you're walking out of a record shop. You're walking home. You're putting it on your turntable. Maybe you're putting it on the stack uh, with other records. And then you're going to have an afternoon or an evening of playing. There's uh, some trivia for you or some... Uh, a thought of yesteryear, the old stack turntables uh, with the tall spindles. Anyway, I recently picked up um, a Hollywood pressing of this album, and it just takes your breath away when you put this on your turntable. You're like in the room with Fogarty and his brother, uh, Stu Cook and whoever the other guy was. <laughs> Flame me in the comments. I, I can't remember all the names of the band right now. But I will tell you what. Uh, such an iconic uh, label, Fantasy, Royal Blue. Um, if you can see that, I am lucky enough. I, you know, I picked up this thing. I was shocked, you know, looking at the cover with this ring wear, this patina, I would have thought this thing is going to be really, really beat like it had been, you know, dropped out the back of a car and run over a couple times. Dead silent, absolutely transformative when you, when that needle drops, just amazing. Um, it brings to the phrase, uh, to mind, more cowbell. <laughs> The cowbell on this thing comes out of the left channel. It's it's just something, you know, Will Ferrell must have been listening to this album before he and or his writers wrote that skit on Saturday Night Live years ago. Such a great skit. I'm digressing. Um, oh, man, it's, this is a seriously, I should probably weigh this thing. This is a heavy piece of vinyl. Uh, it's got a deep groove in the uh, fantasy label area. And there is a faint H stamped into the dead wax. That is the Hollywood pressing. Go look on the Hoffman forums. Just Google Bayou Country Hollywood pressing. You're going you're gonna to see all the raves of, of people that have come behind me before me, sorry, talking about this album and, and this particular pressing and how great it is. If you need to be reminded, Born on the Bayou, Bootleg, Graveyard Train, Side 2, Good Golly Miss Molly, Penthouse Popper, Proud Mary, and the unbelievable Keep On Chuglin. Keep On Chuglin, ladies and gentlemen. Um... Now that I'm looking at the back of the album, I've got the person I missed was Doug Clifford on drums, great drummer, Stu Cook bass guitar, Fogarty on lead guitar, harp and vocals, of course, Tom Fogarty, 
uh, rhythm guitar. What an iconic cover as well. Just kind of a, a blurry, sunshiny afternoon. I'm thinking this was taken somewhere near Mill Valley, California in Marin County. Um, I might have to look that up. <laughs> there is the band. This is an obvious upgrade for me. I had a scratched up, you know, a VG-ish album, and now I've got a VG Plus to near mint. Uh, very, very minimal, if any, surface noise, uh, which is hard to find these days for an album of, of this, uh, a record of, uh, of this provenance. Uh, wow. Wow. This is why we collect records. This is why I encourage people to go out to the used bands on a weekly basis. You're going to find something like this, which is just the best thing since listening to a bad copy of a, of a Credence record. <laughs> this video isn't really one of my, you know, typical vinyl finds. This is what I've picked up over the last 30 days. I really wanted to focus this video on something if you've watched my channel uh, for over two years now. Um, I am all about, first of all, I'm about the music. That's why I collect records. I am a music aficionado. I love music. Always have from listening to the Beatles and Simon and Garfunkel out of my parents' you know, a little component system in the living room of our house in northern Michigan uh, in the early, early 1970s, all the way up to today, going through the digital revolution of the CD situation, joining the Columbia House Club two or three times, getting all those CDs, amassing a collection, rebuying everything that I used to have on vinyl. Uh, and then it was the streaming age, and now we're back again to where we we really can appreciate the music for the fantastic, just the life that it brings your life, the pleasure, the extra reason for being around. Um, music is just one of life's greatest pleasures. And I am so happy I'm back into vinyl again because I still believe, and I've been saying this uh, over many videos now if you've been watching my channel, vinyl is the best experience. It's the warmest. I love the analog sound. Yes, I'm a walking cliche probably, and digital heads and CD heads uh, dis away if you'd like to, but uh, I think... The proof is in the pudding. Uh, if you can find clean pressings of great music that you love um, and you have a decent system, you're going to get a great experience. Where was I? I was talking about this video, what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on sonic standouts that are original pressings or early pressings that are easily found out in used shops, antique uh, flea markets, garage sales, um, Facebook marketplace. Um, you can easily find these records today. Sometimes you can find these for less than $10. And if you know, you know. There are certain albums and certain pressings and certain mastering engineers that you want to try and key in on. And some of these albums, like Bayou Country by Creedence Clearwater Revival, there's a clear winner out there as far as um, the popular choice, as far as people who think, God damn, this Hollywood pressing of this album beats the Santa Maria press. It beats Terre Haute. So that's what I want to talk about today. And what kind of sent me into this mode again was just the joy of finding a fantastic pressing of an iconic album that plays silently, uh, zero noise floor, and explodes out of your setup. 
Uh, the, the stereo separation is fantastic on a two-channel system um, if, if you've got a well-recorded, engineered, mastered, clean record like the one I've just been talking about. Something that you can find out in the wild for literally $5. I was in a record shop. I saw four copies of this record priced between $3 and $8. Um, I guess it was on condition, but the shop that I was at, I don't put a lot of confidence into their staff. And um, it was one of those, uh, you know, used book shops that also has the comic books and records, but mainly books. And the record I'm talking about is Art Garfunkel's second solo album, Breakaway. This is my favorite arty album. And... Um, this is a Santa Maria pressing that I have. Um, I've actually upgraded this copy. I love this album so much. I think I had a Terre Haute that, um, it had, you know, it was a VG-ish copy as well. It had been well loved and there were a lot of surface marks. Um, this copy, this Santa Maria, it's on that, uh, Columbia 360 at the time, the red label. Um... Plenty of luster, plenty of sheen, uh, near mint, and I picked this up, I think, for $5 not too long ago. Again, it's a Santa Maria pressing. A beautiful record. Um, it has TML and the Dead Wax, which, of course, is the mastering lab. Uh, Doug Sachs was uh, the owner, and um, him and his brother, actually, of the mastering lab, one of the fabled, fantastic uh, mastering engineers, mastering houses um, in the business uh, up until Doug Sachs' untimely passing cancer several years ago. Trivia, Chad Kassam from um, Analog Productions and Acoustic Sounds actually purchased uh, the lathes and equipment from uh, the mastering lab after Doug passed away. Uh, pretty cool. This uh, record, Early Pressings, came with a really nice, nice, heavy cardboard inner sleeve. There was a cast of superstars um, on this album. Some of the Beach Boys sang Back Up. Uh, Stephen Bishop was on here as well. The great uh, Leland Sklar on bass guitar. Danny Korchmar, guitar. Several other people. Um, I think this was produced by Richard Perry is a fantastic record producer, mainly in the 1970s. Um, he did, I think, everything that Carly Simon put out as well. Uh, also worked a lot with Leo Sayer, and he, uh, he produced this record as well. Breakaway, Art Garfunkel. And, you know, one of the biggest selling points of this record is it was the first uh, time that uh, Garfunkel and Simon put out a single since the breakup in 1970 of Simon and Garfunkel. That was, of course, My Little Town. Uh, Paul Simon put it out on his uh, album uh, from the same year uh, that came out. So they were on two different albums and... Uh, it is a fantastic song. Love this cover photo. This is iconic. This, you know, streams late night, 1975, probably somewhere in New York. Uh, Art is at a restaurant table and um, clearly enjoying the company of two ladies with him dining there. Um, a well uh, enjoyable evening, if you ask me. Look at that table. Um, that is basically a time capsule right there from uh, the mid-70s. Breakaway, incredible sound, incredible sound stage, perfect separation of instruments. It is a joy to listen to this album. Um, I believe when I fall in love, it will be forever. That's the cover from Stevie Wonder. It's the lead-off track on side one. And it rivals Stevie's version, if you ask me. Up next on If You Know You Know, these are sonic marvels that you should seek out. Everybody knows about this one. T for the Tillerman. 
Uh, there have been countless audio file reissues of this, MoFi's, etc. Really, all you need is that original early A&M pressing. This is a U.S. pressing with that A&M tan label. Uh, doesn't get much better than this as far as the music and the sound quality. This was mastered at Sterling Sound by the founder, one of the founders, co-founders of Sterling Sound, Lee Holko. Look for LH in the Dead Wax and the Sterling Stamp. Uh, T for the Tillerman. Don't have to talk about this album. It's iconic and it sounds very, very, very good. In 1979, kind of out of left field, we got this cool album with this really attractive looking lady uh, with the non-PC uh, cover. You know, she's smoking a, a cigarello right there on the cover, the beret. This kind of screams sophistication. And when you put that album on, you are getting a sophisticated mix of, uh, of jazz, rock, very, very smooth 1970s Los Angeles commercial music, but a little bit off-center, uh, which, of course, uh, Ricky Lee famously is kind of an off-center personality. Um, this album came out on the, the Warner uh, Brothers label. Uh, there's that tan Warner Brothers label at the time. And, you know, everybody talks about Chucky's in Love, but you haven't heard this album properly if you haven't listened to it in a while and really paid attention to Weasel and the White Boys Cool, uh, The Last Chance, Texaco, what a masterpiece, Youngblood, on Saturday afternoons in 1963. The song will take your breath away. The sound quality will take your breath away. You will marvel at the clean, warm, enveloping sound out of this album. Uh, a great artist, Ricky Lee Jones. This thing is so easy to find out there. Um, try and get a specialty or a Monarch press if you can. Um, I actually have a Monarch and um, just love this, love this record. Well, you probably know I broke down and got uh, Countdown to Ecstasy, the UHQR from Analog Productions, Acoustic Sounds. I don't know how many more uh, of the Steely Dan uh, titles I will be getting on UHQR. I'm already on the fence about Pretzel Logic, which is going to be coming out hopefully pretty soon. I may spring for that because I love that album. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with Katie Lyde. I probably will be buying Katie Lyde because we all know about uh, the issues uh, with the, the master recording of that of that record um, with the, the DBX uh, situation uh, from the time. Um, read up on it if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I am probably going to have to get uh, the UHQR of Gaucho, even though I have an incredible pressing. This album is pretty easy to find in great condition. Um, this was the only original pressing that came out on MCA back in the day after uh, ABC folded and MCA purchased the assets. Um, and took over. Um, you want to find um, an album that has, you want to find the pressing that was done by Europa Disc. There will be an EDP in a circle in the Dead Wax. You're also looking, of course, for the Mastering House Master Disc. RL is going to be next to Master Disc on both sides. Robert Ludwig, Master Disc, one of the best mastering houses, one of the best mastering engineers ever. Sit back in your chair, in the sweet spot, in your listening room. Drop the needle on Babylon Sisters and take a 5 minute and 51 second ride down sunset as it falls into the sea. Oh man, I just love this album. Uh, hey 19, Glamour Profession. 
what else do we have on side two? I'm thinking we have Gaucho, Time Out of Mind, My Rival, and an utter masterpiece, Third World Man. This is one of the best sounding records, an original pressing in my collection. It's a go-to that I reach for all the time. If I'm out shopping and I see a copy of this and I find an, an EDP in the dead wax and it's clean, I have a hard time not walking out with that record. I just It's something that can be gifted to friends. It could be a VCLT uh, copy that you have on standby for someone. Uh, maybe maybe you have a niece who's just getting into vinyl like I do. Uh, it's something that you could bestow upon her and gift her. Um, whew. I could go on and on and on. And if you like Steely Dan, um, and if you know my channel, you know that I've done, oh, I think it was a three-part series about a year ago now uh, called the Steely Dan Vinyl Guide. Check it out if... Um, you want to go deep on Steely Dan. But yes, the UHQR situation, Pretzel Logic is coming out soon. Uh, then then there will be, what, Katie Lied, uh, then Asia, and then finally Gaucho. I for sure am probably going to have to get Gaucho. I want to do a, I want to do, um, a comparison and see um, if this can be bettered. I'm... Uh, I'm 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 you know I'm holding out that it it could be bettered. Um, uh, so far, the reviews are in for the first two UHQRs and they're just incredible. Uh, people are raving about them. Um, I I hand it to uh, Chad Kassim, Bernie Grunman. They've done a fantastic job, and um, you know these these records were state-of-the-art audiophile esque pressings when they were released as OGs. So it's quite a feat and um, it's it's amazing to watch. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing the further ones that come out, hearing about them. Probably there's gonna be a little bit of FOMO. I'm probably gonna I'm gonna probably splurge and buy at least two more, I'm thinking right now. But um, I will tell you though Go get an EDP uh, pressing, Master Disc, Robert Ludwig. This thing is fucking amazing. The Buckingham Knicks era of Fleetwood Mac, probably their most commercial, the most famous era. Um, there are several people who will point to the Peter Green era of the late 60s and say that was the quintessential, that was the real Fleetwood Mac. Um, the numbers don't lie. They saw they sold a ton of records um, when uh, when they picked up Lindsey Buckingham along with Stevie Nicks and came out with that self-titled 1975 uh, The White album. One of the albums in that uh, Buckingham Nicks era that people kind of poo-poo. Um, you know, it doesn't get a lot of people talking about it, but. The record sounds incredible. It is Mirage. This is 1982. This is the album uh, that came out after the kind of misadventure Tusk, the double album, uh, where the band kind of let Lindsay run wild as far as the production qualities. Uh, you know, he did a lot of this recording at home uh, for Tusk, a double album. Um, it is a masterpiece, I believe. If you're a Lindsey Buckingham fan, you need to check out Tusk. If you have not heard Tusk, go out and run and, and buy a copy. They're easy to find. Um, this was, was supposed to be kind of a return to form. Very smooth, very commercial, very, very poppy. The fantastic Christine McVie has got some standout songs on this album, uh, including Look at the Hype Sticker, the hit single Hold Me. Um, also, yeah, that lead track, Love and Store, a fantastic Christine McVie pop perfection. Um, and of course, you know, we've got Gypsy. Um, I like That's All Right as well on side one. Side two, uh, the hit was uh, Hold On. We've got Diane, Oh Diane, which is a, um, 
a Lindsay kind of rockabilly 50s throwback. Um, Eyes of the World, a fantastic uh, song as well. And Empire State. Uh, this is a this is a solid album and it sounds amazing. I've got an, an allied pressing, but I dare say anything, any of those original pressings um, from 1982, they're going to sound great. Just make sure you have a clean copy. Um, very, very smooth sounding album, uh, as you would expect from this era of Fleetwood Mac. Uh, Mirage is the album, highly recommended. Okay, last but not least, there was a, a fantastic band that came out of um, Australia uh, and New Zealand in the mid-1980s, Crowded House, Neil Finn. Uh, this was before uh, Tim Finn would join in with his brother Neil from, of course, Split Ends. Um, but the original band, Neil Finn, Nicholas Seymour, bass guitar, Paul Hester, uh, drums, background, background vocals. This has got one of the most gorgeous songs probably ever recorded. That would, of course, be Don't Dream It's Over, the huge uh, single from this album. Uh, it's the third song on side one. This was released on Capitol, that rainbow pressing. Uh, look for Wally in the Dead Wax, Wally Trowget. If you get a Wally pressing, you know you're in for a treat. And um, there is Crowded House. I think this came out in 1985. I'm going to have to double check. I'm not seeing a date here. Uh, but if my memory serves, if not, comments below, please. Uh, what a cool, cool pop record this was. And uh, I don't know. There are arguments that Woodface is the better album from Crowded House. Um, my money is on this one, though. Um, Self-titled, uh, produced by the great Mitchell Froome, uh, did a lot of work with Richard Thompson as well. That guy knew or knows what he's doing uh, when, when you talk about producing a pop album. Great album, sounds amazing. That is it for today. Um, you know, all it takes is for me to find something in the wild uh, that's an amazing sounding pressing, something that maybe I already knew about and it was an upgrade. That was the situation uh, that led off this video. The Great Credence album, Bayou Country, that Hollywood pressing, legendary. Um, all these other titles that I just showed you, they're all original pressings, they're early pressings. Um, if you can seek those out, you will be amazed at the sound quality and even better the music is fantastic thanks everybody for watching we'll be back soon take care